What up, Mandinga? How are you? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming at you with another collection showcase. Now, this is a video I've wanted to make for a while now. Uh, I will be highlighting an imprint, which I don't hear talked about very often, uh, which is unfortunate, considering how popular uh, they were and how historically significant they are when it comes to uh, paperback originals, probably because they were the first. Uh, I'm talking, of course, about Fawcett Gold Medal. Now, uh, Gold Medal uh, was an imprint that was introduced by Fawcett Publications, a U.S. publisher, in 1950, I believe. Uh, and they are important because uh, Fawcett is reputed to be the very first uh, paperback original company. They were the first ones with this gold medal line. And, you know, of course, this was revolutionary for the time. And it actually uh, it did incur the wrath of the hardcover publishers of the time. Uh, not only that, but also because of the types of books they were publishing, which were usually more on the sleazier side uh, and like kind of like these uh, dime, you know, kind of pulpy dime store novels. Uh, they were also kind of threatening uh, pulp uh, magazines as well. So, uh, yeah, but they had a lot of success uh, in the 50s and they published uh, some, you know, great, very important writers, uh, John D. MacDonald, Richard Matheson, uh, Louis L'Amour, had a lot of success. Uh uh, and was, you know, completely was a game changer in terms of, you know, uh, publishing these, you know, paperback originals. Uh, the books that I'm going to be showing you, of course, are a little later on, uh, you know, namely the, the books from the 80s and early 90s. Uh, but they all bear that Fawcett Gold Medal crest and uh, they just have some amazing cover art and I think, you know, deserves to be talked about. So uh, without further ado, that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to pause and take a sip really quick. I always find it strange pausing to drink on camera. It feels like performance art or something. All right, so the first few books that we're going to be taking a look at uh, look at are by the author Robert Arthur Smith, who uh, began by writing some SF in the mid-70s and then switched over to horror in the late 70s and published horror all throughout the 80s and, and even 90s. And uh, yeah, these are, these are pretty amazing. So uh, the first one we're going to be taking a look at is The Toy Maker, and uh, this book was published in 1984. Has a suitably creepy cover there. Pretty, pretty damn neat. Very, uh, very early 80s. I do dig that one. Next up, this might be one of my favorites. Uh, we've got The Keeper. And uh, this one was published in 1986. Amazing, uh, very lurid cover there. Uh, just sleazy as hell. Uh, and I do love that tagline. Greg wants to show you his collection before he puts you into it. It's just amazing. I wonder what uh, women's groups thought of these novels at the time. <laughs> Probably turned their stomachs. But um, yeah, it looks pretty fun. All right, next one, kind of going along with that in that same vein, we've got Deadly Admirer. Uh, this one uh, was published in 1987. Another uh, great tagline. He watches you. He wants you. And now he's going to take you. That's just great. Gotta love the 80s uh, stalker horror. It was a thriving business. All right, uh, next up, we've got a book called Vampire Notes. This one uh, came out in 1989, and that's a pretty cool cover as well. See there, the faucet gold medal. Well, the glare kind of sucks. Yep. And then the last Robert Arthur Smith one uh, that I have Silent Witness, and uh, this book was published in 1991, and this looks pretty interesting as well. All right, next, uh, this is a cover that I absolutely love. We've got Death Sleep by Jerry Soule. Uh, this book was published in 1983, another great tagline, 
he alone roamed the dream world, waiting to kill. And I know what you all are thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. What a flagrant ripoff of A Nightmare on Elm Street, right? But hold your horses. Don't be so quick to judge. This book came out a year before the release of A Nightmare on Elm Street. So, uh, yeah, you know, Wes Craven's not the only one who, you know, could think of that really high concept idea. Uh, but yeah, just that cover really is striking. Uh, really awesome. This, this book does look like a lot of fun. All right, next we've got Kahish. Uh, this is also by um, Jerry Soule, although he's writing as Nathan but Butler here. Uh, this book came out in 1983. Another great, uh, another great tagline. They were helpless against the stranger with the evil eyes. Pretty, uh, pretty cool cover though, right? All right. Next, we've got a few uh, Gary Brandner books. Uh, he's just a great author. Uh, the first one is Walkers. Uh, this book was published in 1980, and um, I think I think I have another edition of this somewhere um, from a different publisher. I can't remember now exactly, but uh, yeah, I haven't read this one yet. It looks pretty cool. Okay, next we've got Hellborn. Uh, this edition from Fawcett Gold Medal came out in '81. This, I think it's this one. This one has an amazing uh, UK edition. I don't remember the company that put it out. It might have been um, New English Library, but it's really, really striking. Uh, this one is, is you know, not, not very impressive. But if you look closely, uh, I didn't notice it the first time. There is like some sort of demonic figure there in the flames. But um, yeah, that's uh, Hellborn. Okay, next up. We've got Carry On, or Carrion, I still don't know. I should have looked that up. Um, this one was published in 1986. Uh, pretty, you know, standard cover, but I do like that kind of goopy, melty face. That's cool. All right, next we've got Floater. By Gary Brandner. This is the first uh, Gary Brandner book I read. Absolutely loved it. Uh, this came out in 1988. This is just like supernatural comfort food to me. Um, great novel. <laughs> Got a great tagline. Um, uh, the spirit lives. Or no, what is it? The body dies. The spirit lives from the astral plane. It, it works its revenge. Um, yeah, it's just like your classic kind of 80s a supernatural tale of revenge. Um, feels like a movie. And interestingly, uh, in the 80s, uh, Empire Pictures had optioned this, uh, and Toby Hooper at one time was attached to direct it. That would have been awesome. Uh, sadly, that never came to pass. But we do have the book. Uh, the book is fun and, and just has that feel of just like, you know, supernatural 80s uh, kind of revenge, ghost horror. Uh, if you're in the mood for that, can't go wrong with this one. All right, and then the last Gary Brandner book we're looking at is Doomstalker. And this one was published in 1989. And uh, that one has a, a pretty funny uh, tagline. Demon fiend of unspeakable evil, life crusher, blood letter, soul stealer. What were those, like alternate titles? And then they came up with Doomstalker. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, this one <laughs> looks, it looks like fun, like your standard kind of cheesy 80s uh, horror novel. All right, next we are taking a look at The Werewolf's Tale by Richard Giacoma. And uh, this one was published in 1988. It's a pretty cool cover. I don't know much about this one, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it seems to be you know decently written and, and seems like a fun, uh, interesting take on the werewolf story. So, uh, yeah, check this one out. All right, next up, we've got a book called Destiny's Carnival. 
And this was written by Warren Murphy and Mark Brownwood. And it was published in 1992. Pretty cool. All right, then we've got a couple of uh, B.W. Batten books. Uh, first one is Smithereens. Uh, this was published in 1987. Uh, you know, B.W. Batten actually wrote like supernatural horror under the name uh, Warner Lee, and those are really cool looking books. I, I own all all of those. They kind of look almost like uh, like YA books for adults. Um, but then I think the, the B.W. Batten ones were kind of more on the sort of realistic, almost like thriller side. Um, this one seems like it's like switching it up a little bit. Here we've got a female uh, psychopath, which is refreshing. So um, yeah, that, that sounds pretty, pretty cool. And then the other one I've got, which I've actually heard uh, good things about, is The Boogeyman. And this one uh, was published in 1984. He's coming to get you. There we are. definitely have a male psychopath. Um, true to form. That looks pretty cool. All right, guys. And the last one, I definitely did save a good one for last. Uh, I absolutely love this cover. We've got... Killing Eyes by John Miglis. This book was published in 1984. And just, just look at that. That's just some amazing, so striking, right? This, uh, you know, feels almost more like a UK uh, cover. Just very, very appealing, striking imagery there. And the back uh, back design is, is very cool as well. Yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. Uh, definitely... Um, look forward to reading this one, hopefully sooner uh, rather than later. Uh, yeah, that's it. Those are my Fossa Gold Medal books. You know, not a whole lot, but, um, you know, they didn't publish, you know, an inordinate amount of, uh, you know, these kinds of horror books. Uh, you know, I'm always adding to the collection, so hopefully, you know, there will be more uh, coming up in future videos, but that's what I've got right now. Pretty, pretty cool stuff, right? Uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Um, you know, shoot me a comment if you've read any of these books and, you know, if you have any thoughts on them. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, check back soon for another book review and another uh, collection update because it's getting to be about that time. Uh, and hope you all are doing well. I will see you guys later. Peace out.